to make videos. Folks, the other day, sitting around me and my boys, we, you know, talking b-ball. That's basketball. For those of you who don't know, not baseball or balloon ball. Balloon ball, I made that shit up. There's no such thing as a balloon ball. I got reminded <laughs> of a time when I played against uh, basketball star Corey McGetty. So back in the day, uh, Dave uh, was not a bad uh, basketball player, if I may say so myself. Uh, pretty motherfucking good. Now, Corey was one of those NBA players that, you know, he was... He stood out because that motherfucker, he looked like he was just always in shape. You know how LeBron just looks like he's always in shape, but then you got other basketball players around him that, you know, you know they're in shape. But LeBron and Corey, they, they look like they're in shape. When you see them, you're like, man, I hate to get punched by that motherfucker. Anyway, at this time, Corey was recovering from an injury and he started coming to the gym where I played. It was a, man, it was a school, Oak, Oakwood, off of the 170 at Magnolia, North Hollywood, California. Now, him and I had actually both uh, been recovering from injuries at that time. Like, I had just got back in a good basketball shape. I can't remember what his injury was, but my injury was uh, uh, fatness. I do believe my injury was fatness. And apparently, it is a reoccurring injury that I'm trying to recover from at this present moment in time. Now, this particular day that we played, we both had pretty much gotten back to our old selves. It took me like three months like to really get back in shape and to be balling again. And Corey was just there, you know, he played, you know, getting his little workout on. Man, those were some good days. We had some fun, folks. I'm not gonna lie, I missed that shit. I, I had to retire. People are too stupid to play goddamn basketball these days. 99% of the motherfuckers you see playing street ball these days are stupid as hell. They have no basketball like you. Not you, I'm not talking about you. But all the people you play with, yeah, yeah, dumb as hell. Dave let it go, he started to get upset. I'm not getting upset, I'm just trying to tell the people. I, 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 you're raising your voice. I'm just trying to make a point. Your blood pressure, Dave, your blood pressure. I'm fine. Look, folks, basketball is really a basic sport. There's not a lot to it. The team that scores the most motherfucking points wins. If you play defense, it makes scoring a lot harder for this motherfucker, and it betters your chances of winning. And the other only thing is communication. You're on a goddamn team. Teamwork makes the dream work, folks. I'm going to break it down for you, folks, for those of you who don't know about basketball, okay? I don't care how bad you are. The easiest way to play defense and make everybody happy on your team is to use your goddamn mouth. That's all you gotta do. Use your mouth. If you are the slowest, fattest motherfucker on the planet and you're guarding somebody and that motherfucker gets past you, all we as a team ask you to do is to yell, help. That's it. You don't even have to move your fat motherfucking feet. Just yell, help. That lets your teammates know, oh, this fat motherfucker needs help. Let me go try to stop his man from scoring. Oh, it's my favorite move. I have to use that motherfucker all the time. I'm 270 pounds. I say help like it's a song. Help, help, help me, help me, help. But you motherfuckers don't say shit. And your man is going by you left and right. Lay up, duck, behind the back layup. I got so much time because there's no help on me. Oh, that shit drives me crazy, folks. Dave, calm down. No, motherfucker, I hate that shit. Just communicate. This, this is the motherfucker that really has made me want to retire. I'm playing with this group of youngsters, and my teammate is in front of me trying to guard somebody with the ball. I'm behind them. I'm watching it like I'm watching a TV screen. I see a defensive guy come and pick my teammate on his right side, and I yell, pick right. This motherfucker just decided to act like he was deaf. I'm yelling it, so I know he heard me, but once again, no basketball IQ. Well, Dave, I don't understand what you're talking about. I'm not a sports guy. I don't understand this ball of the basket you're talking about. What is this pick you speak of? Oh, motherfucker, let me show and explain. Let me take some goddamn shoes and show you something, motherfuckers. Boom! That's the... Oh, see? This is, this is some bullshit. This, this floor right here, it, the nails come up. We call this plank of wood, we call this the sock eater. As you can see, this motherfucker loves putting holes in people goddamn socks. I hate that shit. Motherfucker, not today. Oh no, not today, motherfucker. All right, where you at? Mm -hmm. Yeah, motherfucker, I got something for your anus. Okay. Gonna embarrass me in my goddamn video. All right, uh-huh. Yeah, motherfucker, take that and, and your friend. Yeah, you ain't gonna be doing that shit no more. I apologize, folks. This motherfucker's gonna embarrass me while I'm on camera. All right, okay, this is what I'm talking about. All right, let's just say this, this is Dave. 
bam, that's Dave right there. Red shoe. Why? Because I'm always pissed off playing with dumb behind motherfuckers. Okay? Red shoe is Dave. Playing defense this way. Here's the guy. Yeah, the black team is the other team, okay? Here's the guy with the ball. Dave, why are your shoes so dirty? Because I wear them, motherfucker, on my feet and walk with them on the ground. The ground is dirty. Dirty shoes. Well, why are they so cheap, Dave? Because I save money and buy cameras and make videos for you and for my mental therapy. So here's Dave playing defense. Here's the guy. He's got the basketball, right? He's trying to go any way he can to go score. So he's dribbling the ball, dribbling, 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 right? Get these motherfuckers off the way, right? Remember, folks, it's a goddamn team sport. I'm just trying to do my part, stay in front of the motherfucker with the ball, right? I don't have eyes behind me. So if one of the black players tries to come up and set a pick, oh, I didn't tell y'all what a pick was. That hurt. A pick is when I'm trying to guard somebody, right? This guy has the ball, and one of his players comes up and sets a pick, which is basically just blocking me. So when this guy decides to go this way, uh-oh, I can't go there. I'm stuck on this pick. And this guy goes and scores the basket. The more you know. So right now, pretend like this isn't me. Pretend like this is my teammate trying to guard somebody with the ball. I tell him, hey man, pick right. As in, somebody's on your motherfudging right. Look out for this motherfudger here. When I do that, that lets you know, hey, be ready, because when this guy moves, try to go around him that way, or try to go around him this way. It's called communication, folks. That's how teamwork works. Did the dog just run across my court? It did, didn't it? But not only do these motherfudges that I play with not listen, they don't try to help me out. We on the same goddamn team. You lose, motherfucker, I lose. I lose, motherfucker, you lose. Next thing you know, Dave is here playing defense. Uh-huh. This guy's got the ball. Oh, shoot, I can't, I can't get past Dave. I can't get past Dave. What am I going to do? Help me, team. Help me, team. I can't get past Dave. His teammates then come pick me right. Does my team say anything? Hell to the no. But that's not it, folks. Oh, no. Uh-uh, uh-uh, they don't just pick me right. No, no, motherfucker comes, picks me left too at the same goddamn time. And none of my teammates say shit to me. Oh, Dave, that's horrible. Oh, but wait, at the same goddamn time, another motherfucker on his team comes and picks me from behind. Skirt, skirt. I damn near got the whole other goddamn team trying to stop me from stopping this motherfucker from scoring. And what are my teammates doing? Apparently, them motherfuckers are eating popcorn. What the fudge? I'm over here about to get damn shoe game rate, and these motherfuckers ain't saying nothing. So when this dude with the ball sees all this shit, he's like, oh, this motherfucker can't go nowhere. Let me go score the basket. And my anus is like, boop, what the fudge? Where'd you come from? Well, let me go this Boop, what the fudge? Where'd you come from? Well, let me go. Boop, what the fudge? Next thing you know, I'm getting shoe rate. While this motherfucker goes and scores. Oh yeah, motherfuckers, I got straight motherfucking violated. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure I could have pressed charges against the defense. But what would be the point? I got no witnesses, because apparently my team ain't even on my motherfucking side. They your blood pressure. All right, all right, all right, all right. I, I digress. What the fudge was this video even about? You see, Corey Maggette. That's right, Corey Maggette. I digress. Ooh, sorry. So during this point in time, I would enjoy watching Corey McGetty play for the Clippers. When that dude was really balling, he was a beast. And I went to a lot of Clipper games with my boy Charles Murray, Phil Malisham, and Riley. When Corey started coming to the gym, I was like, cool. I would love to see how I go up, you know, against an NBA player. Cameo. So Corey would come to the court, it was like with two or three people. I don't know if they were his friends, relatives, I don't know. But they would play ball with him against us. And the one guy I, I, I specifically remember was, you know, like a skinny guy. And he knew how to play the game, but, you know, he, he thought it was goddamn Jordan out there. Let me tell you something, skinny motherfucker. If you're watching, you suck. I don't know if everybody else has just been nice to you, but you fucking suck. And I don't mean that in a mean way, spiteful. Just, I mean it in, like, just know you suck. There's nothing special about what you do. Now, the story I'm, I'm about to tell you, I, I got to be honest. It might not put me in a good light at first, but I'm going to be honest. So Corey's got, you know, his little crew, they want to play together and, uh, you know, five on five. So he's got who he came with. And if they needed somebody extra, they got somebody extra. It was against me, myself, moi, my boy, Philip Malisham. And honestly, I can't tell you who the rest of the players we had were. Not because they weren't good, just because motherfuckers, this is a long time ago. I barely remember what kind of sandwich I ate yesterday. But whenever possible, I always play with my boy, Phil. 
because he has a high basketball IQ and we play well together because of that. Phil has a really good shot, three-pointer, mid-range, all that, blah, blah, blah. I'm an inside guy, I like to bang in the post. You know, my shot is all right, you know, but you know, I got a decent, you know, basketball IQ. We start playing, you know, Corey's just, you know, he's just taking it easy, you know, working on his shot, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But a skinny teammate is just running his motherfucking mouth. Now, the first week we were playing, the skinny dude was guarding Phil, because Phil is thin too. Phil ate his anus up, embarrassed this motherfucker, to the point where he didn't even want to guard Phil anymore. So Corey actually started guarding Phil. And Corey's like, okay, this, this guy's got, got a good shot. So the skinny dude comes to me, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Poor little man. You're not going to have a very good day. Man, I got that ball. I spun on him and lost that motherfucking ball. It went that way. I did not mean it for it to go that way, folks. It was supposed to go that way, but that did not happen. But okay, uh, it happens, it happens. Next time I get the ball, b -b 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 brick. I shot that ball so bad, everybody stopped. Watched the ball come back to me as if the ball said, hey, uh, you wanna try that again? Cause that was embarrassing. Play after goddamn play, I looked like I had never played basketball in my goddamn life. I don't know what the fuck happened. And with every miss and mistake I made, this little skinny motherfucker just talking about, oh man, you suck, get him the ball. Oh, I got an easy day. I don't even need to guard you, shoot it. And I'm like, motherfucker, I'm gonna eat you up. But I didn't, folks. I sure goddamn didn't. All right, lesson learned, sometimes that shit happens. So mind you, we only play at this one particular gym once a week. So I gotta wait a whole week till I see Corey McGetty and this sorry motherfucker again. Mind you, this is like the first time I played, you know, against a real NBA player. And after the game, he's going to Phil like, hey man, yo, you got a good shot, man. You, you, you played in college, played, you know, blah, 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 blah. And him and Phil are buddy, buddy. And I'm there like, all right, all right, Corey, I'll catch you next week, man. I, I know we play much better. <laughs> you ain't even listening to me, huh? <sighs> man, that shit was embarrassing. So all week I'm like steaming, I can't wait till next week to play these motherfuckers again. And, and it, honestly, it wasn't because I look bad in front of Corey. Who gives a fudge? Everybody has bad games. But this little skinny motherfucker, he just, I, it rarely happens, but he got under my nerves. Only because I played probably the worst I've ever played in my life. And he honestly thought he was that good. So I'm like, okay, oh, I'm gonna punish this motherfucker next week. So next week comes along, same goddamn thing. I don't know if, Mars and the moon and that. I can't explain it folks, I really can't. And that little skinny motherfucker was saying the same goddamn shit all game long. I know what it is, you know what it is? No we don't, Dave, tell us. I will tell you. What it is is, when a motherfucker comes to our courts and you're new, like normally there's, there's a, a level of respect just to be on the court, period, okay? And when you start talking trash, like crazy out of your name stuff to people on they court, and you brand motherfucker new, mm, it's a problem. Oh, dear, that hurt. So like I said, week two comes by, he doesn't even try to guard Phil. He comes straight to me because he thinks it's the same sorry Dave as last week. And the motherfucker was right. So now I'm driving back home thinking this is so goddamn embarrassing. I think I'm going to change my last name. It was bad, folks. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I'm in shape. I've been bowling. I mean, killing people for like the last two months. And now it looks like I've never touched a basketball in my life. What the fudge? Week number three comes. And I'm thinking, okay, I had a bad game two weeks ago. Last week, that was a fluke. What good player has back-to-back -back weeks like that? None. Not that bad. We all have slumps, but not that bad. So week three comes, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to show Skinny Man and Corey I'm a bowler. Now, mind you, Corey has been cool with Phil and everybody that is a good player at the gym. No disrespect or shade to me. It's just like, you know, you can't have a conversation with somebody you can't relate to. It's like, hey, I'm good with computers. Oh, what? You don't know anything about computers? Okay, we don't really have a lot to talk about. It's more like that. Corey's a good basketball player. David's never touched a basketball in his life. Oh, okay. We don't have much to talk about. <laughs> you know, there was no shade. It just, that's the way it looked. So I'm like, this is week three. I'm going in hard, son. Because at this point, it's embarrassing. Me and Corey are the biggest dudes on the court by far. Corey's like 6'6", 225, something like that. I'm 6'3", and I'm like 245. His height really wasn't a big deal. But it looks crazy when... He's guarding Phil, who's 6'3", a buck 70. He's not even going to waste his time guarding me. He'd rather guard Phil and get a good workout. And I got this little skinny motherfucker guarding me, talking shit the whole time like a goddamn net. We start playing, folks, and I ship you not. I played worse than I did both other times. What the fudge? How am I six foot 
100 looking like a baby shack out there and I, I can't even make a goddamn layup. So now I'm at a point where like, I, I, I don't know what the fudge is wrong with me. Um, just gotta go back to drawing board. It's all the greats do, bring it in internally. Don't think about what you know you can do. Just think about the basics. Mind you folks, this is a month process, okay? Week four comes along and you know, you know, I'm humbled. I'm, I'm greatly humbled. Maybe that's, maybe that's the lesson I was supposed to learn. Humility, humility. Because best believe I was humble. People had lost all respect for me on the basketball court. Everybody was having fun, laughing, talking to each other, and nobody was even talking to Dave. Except for Phil, you know, because he was one of my best friends and because I was his ride there. Now that I think about it, he it would be in his best interest to at least talk to me. But I digress. So here we go again. Corey and his crew versus me, Phil, and our crew. And we just start playing. We just start playing. And once that ball hit my hand, folks, it was like the NBA gods blessed it. Oh, man, I could play. Skinny man was talking shit. Bam! In your eye. But I didn't say that. I just stayed calm and focused. So here he comes down with the ball, doing whatever he's doing. Bloop, give me that ball, skinny man. That's right. Stole the ball from him. Go down. Do my little spin. Boom. Another bucket. 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 Go down court. Yeah, man, I ate this motherfucker up. Oh, I was back, folks. Dave was back. And all that shit he was talking those other weeks, oh, I reminded him. Yeah, motherfucker, this is how I really play. Watch this. Bop. Oh, yeah, I don't know who told you you thought that you could play. Watch out. Boom. Oh, you fell down. Bop. Need help? You ain't gonna get it from me. Oh, his mouth shut up real quick. He knew he was in trouble. So next thing you know, Corey McGetty's like, hey, hey, uh, Slim, I got him. I got him. I got him. So I'm like, okay, cool. Cool. Now, Corey has been playing and pretty much just going through people. I mean, 6'6", 225. Not too many people where we play are getting in his way. But he had to change and guard me to stop the bleeding because this game was about to get out of control. Like my other teammates, they weren't even trying to score. They were just giving me the ball. And like, tear him up, Dave. That's what I'm talking about. That's the Dave we know. Corey's like, okay, we're going to stop this bullshit right now. So now, me and Corey, we start going at it. And in, in, in a respectful way, you know, mano y mano, warrior to warrior. And don't get me wrong, I'm not delusional, okay? This is not Corey McGetty playing game seven in the NBA Finals. This is Corey McGetty saying, okay, all right, my team is down. You ain't just gonna, he's gonna go run all over us like that. I'm an NBA player. Let me go ahead and show you a little something, something, Dave. So Corey comes down the lane. Mind you, most of the people I'm playing with, Corey can just fart hard enough and they'll move out the way. But remember, Corey's 225. Dave is like 245. So when he comes down that middle, Bam! These two big bodies meet. And Corey kind of bounced back and he's like, oh, oh, okay, Dave, you, you kind of solid. Okay, we're going to have some fun. That was one of the best games I've ever played. I'm, and I'm not talking about like, like my skill wise. I'm talking about like just hardcore going at it and having fun doing it. You know, so Corey would score, I would score, you know, Corey would be like, all right, you know. And we end up winning the game because I had already scored so many goddamn points on his teammate. It was just too big of a hole for Corey to dig his whole team out of. You know, so the game ends, the night's done, we're all going back to our cars, and, and Corey's like, yo, Dave, man, hey, man, good, good plan today. And I'm like, thanks, Corey. And in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I know, motherfuckers, I put it on people today. David's face wasn't playing. So I get in my car, you know, I'm driving home, I'm smiling, and I'm just thinking about like, okay, I redeemed myself. And I'm not gonna lie, folks, you know, I, I, I was proud and a little tear, you know, started to roll down my cheek. And it wasn't so much because I finally showed them, no, no, David Spates is a baller. It wasn't so much that, I think it was more of the, the fact that uh, it felt like Corey had broken every bone in my body. Oh yeah. Once I started driving home, that pain set in. That motherfucker literally fractured this thumb and this pinky. You see how crooked this pinky is? Yeah, that's, that's the second time it's been broken. Oh, Corey fudged me up. Yeah, I didn't let it show during the game, but God damn it, boy, the next two months was, was full of pain for Dave. Moral of the story, folks, is uh, if you think you can hang with a professional at what they do and you are not, you are hugely mistaken. I'm sure Corey went home fine, like, oh, that was a nice little workout, thanks, Dave. Meanwhile, I'm at home in the bed, crying and praying that the pain go away. Was it worth it? Oh, hell yeah, hell yeah. Professionals, whatever they do, 
they practice at it, it's their job, it's what they do. So the next time you're at McDonald's and the cashier's going a little too slow and you start getting pissed off, well, I tell you what, why don't you jump your behind, back behind that counter and see if you can ring up your order any faster. Not gonna happen. Respect professionals. Some of them are not as good as other professionals, but guess what? Motherfuckers are probably better than you. So take that little gem with you. I'm David Space. Now get that camera on my face, sucker. When you think of love, do your heart beat round and round? Ha he! When you think of love, do your feet jump off the ground? DavidSpace.com. Hey!